everyone, welcome to my channel, That's Right A Homeschool, I am Mrs. T. Today I'm sitting in front of our kids' books and we are going to be doing a tour of their bookshelves. Now their bookshelves are mostly, like all of these books that we'll go over, are located in our kitchen and dining area where we spend most of our time. It's right near our living room and our kids come over here and we pick up books just all throughout the day. We have a routine at night where we're reading a number of these books and we're just always picking up books. And I feel like one of my, one of the key things for us, what has really increased our reading is having easy access to them. So these used to be located in a different part of the house that we weren't frequenting as much. And we just found that we weren't reading as much. So we made a shift, we pulled these two, kind of a little bit of an unconventional spot. <laughs> and we have been really enjoying their, enjoying them being here inside the house. Now this bookshelf, is filled with books. Some of them are ones that my husband and I actually had from our own childhood. We have a good number of them that we kind of inherited from our parents. Um, but most of the books that we have purchased do come through library book sales, thrift books, and book outlet. Though I do also order occasionally through Amazon if I can't find a specific book that I'm looking for in a different location. So. Those are our main places that we acquire our books. And the last thing to note before we hop into it is that my children also have a bookshelf, two shelves in their room of just board books that they can explore on their own. And usually they do that in the morning when they get up before leaving their room, they like to look through some board books together. So those we won't cover today, but here we go, our big bookshelf tour. Without further ado, let's get started. Here we have our first shelf. This is primarily our French resources. We have some French poetry and en trois. We have some French and English bilingual picture books. We have some here. And then we also have a couple over here as well. Then we have this French series. This is about a wolf and these are just ch normal children's picture books. And we have a couple other children's picture books as well. Then over here, we have some early readers. These things are really cool. We have two different kinds. We have um, the early readers from Semi Chouli, and then we also have the next set from La Rousse. And both of these programs are to help children learn how to read in French. So they offer some pronunciation guides and things like that. It's actually really, really cool. And then above this, we have our two sets for our Language Together French books, which come with audio and very basic French vocabulary exposure. So that's our French shelf. Below that, we have some chapter books and some phonics readers where the parent needs to be involved. And these are all chapter books that we've either read recently or we are going to visit again. So of these, we have read this one all the way through twice. We've read these a few times. We've read Pumpkin, Ginger, and Spice. We read the two Paddington books and then um, one of The Mouse and the Motorcycle. But I do think we're going to be reading a bunch of these throughout the upcoming year. So I got out some of these books for us to explore again. This series right here is from Usborne. This is their very first reading, what's it called? My first reading library. So these green books here are those early readers. And then we get into some more independent readers, but we're not quite ready to tackle more beyond these first two. And the parent needs to be involved in these at this stage. All right, the shelf below it, we have some more chapter books and things that we are enjoying at this point in time. So we have some really cute books over here. We've got Brambly Hedge and Tum Tum and Nutmeg. These are really cute books about animals. We have these really fun um, very colorful early readers. We have the Princess in Black series as well as the Mercy Watson series. And my child loves these. We pick them up and we read them just randomly, honestly, at this point in time. Another series that we really love here is the Dragon Master series. We've gone through 14 of these books so far, and we've gone through three of the Magic Tree House books over here as well. So we do like those and we want to continue those during this upcoming school year. I also did buy some Zoe and Sassafras books, which we have not read yet, but um, I'm hoping to tackle in our kindergarten year. Okay, next shelf. Below this, we have a couple of things. So a lot of these books here are going to be supporting our Bookshark Level A Reading with History curriculum that we're doing in this upcoming school year. But we also have 
um, things like the Illustrated Children's Bible. We are a secular homeschooling family and we do not, are not associated to any religion, but part of the secular point of view that we want to teach is understanding different points of view, which does mean understanding the Christian perspective as well and learning about the Bible. So we are going to be doing some Bible study. We have our Thomas the Tank collection, which my children love. And yeah, a couple other books here that are not part of Bookshark, but we read all the time. On to the next shelf. All right, this next shelf here on the bottom contains a lot of Lift the Flap books and Us Born Unique books. So we have this really nice uh, dinosaur stencil book that my children really enjoy doing. This was a used book that they got from um, grandma actually. And it is really enjoyable. It basically pops up these and then they are able to trace some dinosaurs. We have some busy bug pullback books which have toys involved. We have our lift the flap books about different things. And then we have a couple of sound books. We have our Eric Carl and there's one from New Zealand as well. And then we just have kind of an assortment of taller books. We just bought this uh, series here. It's called um, When Plants Took Over the Planet, When the Whales Walked, and When We Became Humans, and those were about evolution. But basically, we have some taller, chunkier books on this shelf. On to our next shelf. All right, on this shelf, we have a lot of our board books. These are books that, although we're outgrowing board books as a whole, my children still do pull from a lot, particularly my younger one. We have some noisy books over here, some that play music, some that are interactive. And the other books that they really, really enjoy are these nibble books here in the front as well. Um, but we have some of our favorite board books here. The shelf below it, we have a lot of our square shaped paperback books. And these are going to include things like our Berenstain Bears books, which we actually had from my childhood growing up. So a lot of these are my own childhood books. We have Curious George. We have some, um, what are these called? Some of our National Geographic Kids science books and some bigger series like that. We also have over here an assortment of books that we have gotten. And we did get a lot of our um, books as well from, oh, what is it called? From Dolly Parton's Imagination Library. A lot of those are also these larger um square books and those are on this, this shelf as well. Now I want to point out this little corner of this shelf here. We have our emotional books that my child, my children do pick up independently and we read together when we're having a little bit of a hard time. So we do have our little spot books, which my child does enjoy, but these are not our favorite emotional books. These are not the ones that help us the most in our time of frustration. The ones that help us the most are from these two series. We have the um, Learning to Get Along series, and these are just absolutely wonderful. They come with like parent prompts and um, discussion points. And then we have our Best Behavior books, which these are also really wonderful. They come with all sorts of discussion prompts and things like that that really help navigate our emotions. All right, next shelf. This bottom shelf here is just another assortment of children's books, easy to reach. These are primarily rectangular books. We've got a couple of square books, but mostly rectangular books, things that my children really enjoy picking up. Um, and yeah, we've read every single book on the shelf and we're really enjoying it so far. All right, next shelf. Okay, here's another set of our um, board books. Uh, these are ones that are, again, are still favorites, particularly of my younger child. And what, some of his favorites are right over here. He loves these book, books by Audrey and Don Wood. We have The Napping House and The Little Mouse, The Red Ripe Strawberry and The Big Hungry Bear. These are some of his favorite books that he will pick up and kind of read by himself, read by himself. Um, and he frequently picks them for bedtime and they're just so much fun. We love those books. Down a layer. We come to some more square books. These are going to be hardcover squares and some of these are going to be collections. The George and Martha Complete Collection is really fun. My children really do enjoy those books. They pick those ones up a lot. Um, but we do also, this is a relatively new edition. We got this very affordably from a library book sale. Um, but we just, they're just kind of these collections of books that speak to my children. 
Now we have not read every book on this. We actually just recently acquired a couple of um, books such as this book here, That Flag. This one tells the story about the Confederate flag and how it affects two different families. And we have, we have not read that one yet, but that is one of our new ones. And this one here is another one of our new ones, Words Between Us. But most of these books here on the shelf we have read multiple times. All right, down one shelf, we are getting into some taller books here. We have some collections. We have some African-American folk tales. We have Peter Rabbit. We have some classics here. We have fairy tales and all sorts of things. This one here is absolutely wonderful. This is James Harriet's Treasury for Children. And we read this one all the time. My kids really, really enjoy this one. We also have some of our additional early readers down here, but these are going to be higher level. My child is not ready for these at all for independent reading, but we still do pick them up and explore them as a family. All right, next shelf. Okay, the next shelf that we have here is our early phonics and our current level for my child. So he is currently able to read all of these Bob books that are here. He's working a little bit through this collection three, which is the long vowels. So those ones are a little bit more difficult, but these are more of his independent reads. These early phonics readers as well, he's working through. And then these ones over here are level zero and level one of like, I can read and like different early reading levels. And those he's not quite ready for, but will be ready within the year. So very exciting. Next shelf down here, we have our beginner book section, and these we pull from just, gosh, all the time, all the time. We love these beginning book series um, collections that they that bundle up a bunch of different um, Dr. Seuss and other books. Those are really enjoyable. My kid really does love them. But one of our favorites on this shelf is right here. Good old classic. Harold's Purple Crayon Treasury. We read that one all the time. And so that one's a really, really fun one. All right, right below that, we have another shelf. These are taller books as well, a mix of hard cover and soft. And I'll just kind of zoom in here. We've got a mix of some search and finds. We have this series here, which is really enjoyable. It's all about like making choices. So it's like a choose your own adventure. We have just a number. Oh, this is one of our favorite books at bedtime, The Moon and Farmer McPhee. If you have not read it, I highly recommend it. It's really cute. But Farmer McPhee is basically going about his day and he's not really paying attention to the moon, but the animals do. And it's all about just him finding the moon, basically. It's very cute. So here we go. And let's move on to our next shelf. All right. Our next shelf here are some hardbacks, larger square books. And this is just going to be a huge um, variety of books up here. We have some that are being called out by different uh, curriculum. We have ones that we picked up for our own knowledge and education. And we have fun ones, silly ones, just a huge variety. This is one of our favorite pop-up books. In fact, I think it's our only pop-up book that we have but this one is a real hoot and we really just enjoy every book on the shelf we have read a couple of times. These ones over here, Explore Frog and Uncover the Human Body, are a lot of fun. We got them from Costco. And these ones basically, uh, my children like to just pull up and independently explore it. But when you open these books, you get the, a look on the inside and they tell you all about the different parts of the frog and the human body respectfully. And it's really enjoyable. My kids really, really like that those two books. Okay, last shelf that I have right over here. Let's zoom on down. We have a collection of taller rectangular hardback books. And these mostly are just books that kind of struggle to fit on other shelves. <laughs> so we have a couple of really fun interactive ones that were from... Um, our childhood. So these were actually my husband's books and my husband's and his siblings books. So we have, there's a mouse about the house and a squirrel's tail. And these are really fun, just interactive where you put the mouse and the squirrel going through the holes in the book and they go on their own adventures. And that is like a lot of fun. My kids love those books. 
We have a lot of our Mother Goose books on this section just because they tend to all be pretty tall. And we do have a, a couple of different varieties of Mother Goose. So we do have our Arnold Lobel, which is definitely a classic. We have the Real Mother Goose from Scholastic, which this that one's the one from my childhood. We have our favorite nursery rhymes from Mother Goose. And then we also have this one here, Richard Scarry's Best Mother Goose Ever. And we definitely have read from these a lot. We really, really enjoy these books. The other books that I just want to kind of note, oh, and we also have this one, I forgot one. And I knew I was missing one. And then this was a relatively recent acquisition. I think we got this last year and we do really like this one as well. The art is different, very different from the other variations of Mother Goose that we have. Now, the last book that I want to talk about on this shelf is so good, you guys. This was so much fun, and I will be talking about this book in another video, but Duistak is an, a book where it is not in any language. It is just in bug speak, and that is just a lot of fun. Okay, we are going to move now to the top of the shelves. Okay, so I just want to show you what I have on the top of our bookshelves. I do have this organization um, thing. I don't even know what to call it, an organizer that has all of our current curriculum that we are pulling from. And next to it, we usually keep our library books and our library books do get scattered throughout the house as we are reading and enjoying them. But we do like to try to keep them here. All right, you guys, and that is it. Thank you so much for joining me. Comment down below. Let me know what you think. Do you have a lot of books for your kids to explore as well? What are some of the favorites that you have in your house? And uh, yeah, you guys have a wonderful day. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.